and our own dominant life form. The resemblance is unpleasant. These are the only Tellurians in captivity. Some scientists think that their discovery refutes Waldeck's theory that life in the universe is infinitely variable. An even more interesting, though less amusing, form of life is the Ogron. They are of limited intelligence and are used as servants by some race called um, Daleks, I believe. We will shortly be seeing the prize of my collection, the Drashix. Drashix? They are, without doubt, the most evil, the most vicious, and undoubtedly the most frightening form of life in the whole of the universe. Hi everyone, Tardis Sky123 here, and today I'm going to be doing a top 10 video. This time, counting down my top 10 Doctor Who classic series writers. Now, I decided just to go for the classic series for this one. Mainly because the classic series and new series, in terms of writing and in terms of a lot of other things, to be honest, are extremely different, and yet they've got a very different format to work nowadays. So I thought it would be unfair to kind of like do classic writers and new writers together. I may do that one day. I may do a different, probably will do a different video for um top ten new series writers at some point as well. But for now, we're just doing the classic series writers, and there have been some amazing ones. So let's get started with Christopher Bailey. It's another male. The old red faced one who shouts. No matter. Continue. But you said that only a woman could understand, that it's dangerous for a man. Do as I say. Go on. Open it. Please, you must. We mean you no harm. So Christopher Bailey had only written two Doctor Who stories, both Fifth Doctor ones, and both featuring Namara, so they're very linked together. And yeah, he was originally going to do a third, I think, called Maytime or something. Um, but you know that eventually never happened, and he stopped being a writer. But nevertheless, he was very good on um, these two stories. Kinder is absolutely amazing, and Snake Dance is great also. And they they got they're very um buddhery. I'm not sure if that's a word, it probably isn't, but you know, they got a lot of Buddhist overtones and whatnot. And yeah, you know, I like that kind of thing. It's I think Barry Letts would probably like these stories, but you know and they're very thought provoking and not necessarily about good versus evil, which is interesting. So now let's move on to ninth and eighth place together. And that is Dave Martin and Bob Baker. Seems strangely familiar. Is it yours, Joe? Flute? No. Well, properly speaking, it's a recorder. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering where that had got to. You haven't been trying to play this, have you? Oh, I can see you've been doing the TARDIS up a bit. Hmm. I don't like it. Oh, my word. Oh dear, we are in trouble, aren't we? Just as when I turned up. Doctor, Doctor. Now these are two quite controversial writers, and I've decided to put them together mainly because, well, they wrote all their stories together, um, except for one, which was Nightmare of Eden, where Bob Baker worked on his own. But other than that, they were a writing pair, and you know, they came up with some really good ideas, and I think you know they came up with fun stories, probably. They didn't come up with serious, intense ones. They more came up with kind of like light and fun ones, I think, which is quite important because you know you can't always be dark and serious. So those are relegate a bit boring. That and while those stories are probably I like a bit more, I prefer to have. I would like to have um these ones dotted about the place as well. You know things like um what do you call it? The claws of Axos and the Invisible Enemy. Things like that. You know that are just enjoyable to watch. So now let's move on to 7th place and that is Kit Pedler. What is it? I think it's their, their leader, their, their controller, Jamie. Kit Peddler, you know, the co-creator of the Sidemen, or the creator, depending on which way you view it. I think he probably was more involved in it and had more of a 
solid idea than um Jerry Davids is, which is why I chose to put his on put him on his own and whatnot, and he also wrote the moon base on his own, so he's more viewed as a separate writer from Joe Davis. But you know, I think that Kit Pender got the Cybermen absolutely right. He nailed them. He's the best to ever write for the Cybermen. He really understands them very well. And you know, they just he got that idea kinda of like of the fear of um medicine kinda of like practice, you know, placing limbs becoming common becoming commonplace and whatnot, replacing organs and everything, and that's really powerful, I think, it's a really strong idea, and it was part of the thing that made them so scary back then, and I think now that it's just kind of like, the conversion itself is more just, um, in New Who, it's more just simply going to a machine and then you suddenly turn to five minutes, literally only your brain, apparently, you know, I'm not, I don't really like that too much, to be honest, yeah. It was more left ambiguous in the classic series, and I like that. You can like it there that they slowly became this over time, and that's terrifying. So now we'll move on to fifth place, is it? Fifth or sixth, I'm sorry, I'll have to check. And that is um, Robert Banks Stewart. It's the cast of a tooth, wouldn't you say? Teeth? Doctor, you can't be serious. The teeth are very serious things, Mr. Huckle. Look, let's get this straight. Are you trying to tell me those rigs were chewed up by a set of giant molars? Yes. A set of giant molars that can chew through solid steel as easily as paper. Okay, so then we are at sixth place. Sorry about that. And, um, Robert Blake Stewart, he only wrote two stories for Doctor Who. He was going to write a third, but got caught up in other work. But, um, anyway, you know, he wrote two, and they're both the start at the end. Um, one's the start and one's the end of season 13. Which is often considered to be the best. It's part of Philip Hinchcliffe's Sarah with the Fourth Doctor and Sarah, and you know, he created the Zygons, which are my favourite monsters. And he also did the Seeds of Doom, and which is another incredible story. It's fairly recently seen, but I think it's very, very good. And you know, he just I think he's a great writer, great ideas, and whatnot. And you know, I think the Foe from the Future would have been interesting, but I'm happy with Talisman Sham. I mean, Chiang, I'm happy with what we got there from Robert Holmes. So now let's move on to fifth place. It is fifth this time, I'm certain, and that is Terence Dix. Ah, there you are at last, my dear fellow. What kept you? What kept me? Of all the confounded arrogance. Never mind, never mind. You can tell me later. Come and take a look at this. What is it? Tegan. Sarah. Hmm. Fascinating. What's happened to the little fellow? The little fellow is perfectly all right, thank you very much. <clears throat> of course I'm here. You don't imagine anything you two can do would stump me, do you? Let's have a look. What's this? Now, what amazes me about Terence Dix is how long a connection he's had with Doctor Who, and how few stories he's actually written when you think about it. Because, I mean, the first story he wrote was Robot, but nevertheless, you know, he's been involved since Patrick Charlton's time as the Doctor, because he was script editor for a very long time, and it's interesting how he didn't write any stories during that time, as Robert Holmes did a lot during, um his time as script editor, but, you know, nevertheless, he, he's a great writer and the ideal choice to write The Five Doctors, I think. You know, he absolutely nailed that story, got the balances perfectly right between the Doctors. And, you know, it was all very enjoyable, I think. So, and, well, while some of his individual efforts haven't been the best, you know, he still had some very good stories and, um, produced what was probably, not produced, sorry, script edited for what was probably my favourite era with um, Barry Betts as producer and John Pertwee as the Doctor. So now let's move on to fourth place with Derek Sherwin. There don't seem to be any Cybermen about at all, that's odd. Well, let's not waste time then.
Now, Derek Sherman, probably a lot of you will consider this quite an odd choice, but, you know, I love the invasion. And, well, Kip Heather did have a general outline for the story. I think Derek Sherman was the one who really brought it to life, you know, really had a great hand in writing it and everything. And he made it last for eight episodes, which is no mean feat, and he really did do that well. I mean, there is no... um real laggy of the story at all and he's just I think he's a great writer to be honest so now let's move on to third place with Don Newton look your name is Lethbridge Stewart yes Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart Brigade leader all right Brigade leader have it your own way and you are Elizabeth Shaw how did you know my name you've been spying on this establishment what are you talking about your name my name you ask me my name after all the years that you and I to see what's happened here. Um, might I suggest you just call me Doctor? Doctor? Doctor what? Smith. Dr. John Smith. Or is it pronounced Houghton? I, I don't know, but what I do know is that he's an incredible writer. I've only seen one of his stories, Inferno. He wrote two, and the other one was um, Mind of Evil, which I've heard very great things about, and I hopefully will get that soon. But you know, Inferno was absolutely incredible. He really is a great writer, I think. He, he made it so, um, so gritty, so great with the um parallel world aspect, and there's just so much that's good about this story. And it's very hard to fault, other than the a bit of an anticlimax at the end of episode seven. But you know, how can you really do a climax? Or something like that after you've had six well seven episodes of amazement so yeah now let's move on to second place with of course robert holmes we'll find out soon enough Myra, can you hear me she can hear you what do you want noah your resistance is useless we control the ark and we control the cryogenic chamber I repeat, what do you want? We offer you safe passage from the Ark. Surrender now, and your lives will be spared. Now, Robert Holmes is rather self-explanatory why he's on here. He's such an amazing writer. You know, he's wrote, written a lot of Doctor Who, and has rarely had a dud. Yet yeah, he's absolutely incredible. He does characters really well. He's just a great writer. So now, let's move on to what we've all been waiting for, which is first place, which is... Malcolm Hulk. But I still don't understand why you stayed down here. The hibernation mechanism was faulty. It did not function until a new energy source appeared. The power station of the research center? Yes. We are now able to drain off its energy. But soon we shall revive our civilization and reclaim the Earth for ourselves. Now, a lot of you will probably be thinking, well, this is an interesting choice, and I'll assume probably then. Who's Malcolm Hulk? Well, he wrote a couple of stories, and I think the reason I love them so much is because they're quite political in some senses, and yet they're very enjoyable for that, and they're very moral tales, and very kind of like representative of the time, and yet I think they really were the ones that best fitted, um, what should we call it, um, Barry Letts' and Terrence Dix's vision for the show. So I really like them for that as well, because that's my favourite era of the show, most probably. So... Yeah, there's loads of reasons I've gone about it all day, but yeah, I'm gonna stop here and say thanks for watching everyone and I will see you all next time, I guess. Bye everyone.